Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we are going to be taking a look at how to use the enhanced input system in Unreal Engine 5.1. Now if you were to notice if you head into your project settings under input so you would see this warning which says access and action mappings are now deprecated please use enhanced input actions. So I'll be teaching you guys how to use that today. So it's fairly simple. First of all this should be enabled by default but in case it's not just head into your plugins and over here if you type in enhanced you should be able to find enhanced input once that's done enable that and now if you were to head into your third person blueprints third person character you would notice that it's already implemented let's do it from scratch so that i get an opportunity to actually explain the stuff here so i'll just go ahead and delete all of this now i want to take one extra step that is I want to just create a new player controller so if you head into world settings you'd see that the player controller is just the default player controller class so head into blueprints blueprint class and go ahead and create a player controller and we'll just call this one BP underscore PC for player controller you could create it accordingly over here on begin play what we have to do is we have to add a mapping context now I will get to what that is soon so create a new folder and this is where we'll have our input stuff. Now inputs are no longer handled in the project settings. Instead they're handled by these two classes mainly. So the first one under input is going to be your mapping context. So the mapping context is one which you'll have just one of, one of them for your game and maybe one of them for your main menu or something. So this mapping context is going to contain a collection of all your action and access mappings. Now those who aren't familiar with the old system, basically your key presses and your hold and stuff, basically those refer to your action and access mapping. So, so your pressed and released would be your action, action mapping and let's say your uh, joystick movement would be your access mapping. So all of those will be contained inside this now. So it basically combines many of those features into one. So we'll just call this one BP underscore game underscore mapping context. So you can name it appropriately. We'll just create one. And we have a bunch which have been created for us, but we'll create our own. So input, input action. This is both for your action and action access mappings if you're familiar with the old system. So we'll just call this one move. Open it up. And over here, now since movement is going to be your x and y direction basically so your w and s is going to be your y direction and your a and d is going to be your x direction so you have two axes along which you can move so you would make this one axis 2d save that i'll get to bool as well bool is basically or just pressed and release so for example you have jumped or something so over here now i should be getting move and you can map keys so i'll map my w key and I will map my S key, so S on the keyboard. Do that once again, do it for the A key as well. And we can do that for D. Now, one thing that you will notice, so uh, my D key should be here. One thing that you will notice is there's actually no way to configure whether you want it to use the X or Y axis. That is where the modifiers come in. So W and S are basically your Y axis and not your X. By default, it is going to take the X axis. So head into W, go to add array element for the modifier and select this one which says swizzle input axis value. And do the same for S. And along with that, just add in a negate. So basically it'll take minus of the value. And I will get to player mappable in the next video. So not to worry about that. Now in your player controller, what I want you to do is get the enhanced input local player subsystem. And what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to add a mapping context. And we can go ahead and select our PP game mapping context. And just for simplicity, I'll just head back into my third person character and select my move action. So we should be able to find it somewhere here. So if I cannot find, so if I type in action, maybe move, whoops, 
move so we have our move the action event now just on triggered I'll just go ahead and print it out just in case so now if I were to go ahead and press play if I were to go ahead and press play as you can see uh, it does not move first of all that's because we haven't actually added the code to make it move so on started we could do that so go ahead and do that and the reason it's not working is because we haven't set a player controller so change that to BPPC now if you were to notice on triggered you are going to be getting your value so hello is going to be printed every frame basically so that's about it so that's how you would get the system to work and if you were to right click and split this pin now we would get your X and Y we can go ahead and print X and Y separately just so that you guys know what it's actually doing so if I go ahead and press my A key or D key it says 1 on the X if I go ahead and press my W it says 1 S is going to be negative 1 so in the mapping context what we can do is for the A key we can go ahead and negate so that we get our negative X direction and we can go ahead and fix stuff later if it's not proper so we can do our add movement input it's the same thing which you would do previously so when you trigger move we are going to add movement input for the direction we'll just get the forward vector of the actor so get actor forward vector and the scale value is going to be the y and we can go ahead and add movement input once again and over here for the world direction we can go ahead and get the right vector so get actor right vector and the scale value is going to be the x so as simple as it gets now if I were to go ahead and press play as you see it's working and ignore the weird movement thing that is more due to the movement logic yeah, there's a temporary fix if I just do orient rotation to movement if I just go ahead and uncheck that it's going to work that's not the point you could copy over the movement logic but anyways you get how the values work so I can move right left forward and backward the movement isn't really the focus of this video so this is how you set up a mapping context and this is how you set up axis mappings now what if you wanted to jump so for those you can go ahead and add in another one we'll create another input action here input input action and call this one jump this is going to be fairly straightforward this is just going to be bool so it's either pressed or not pressed so basically true and false and under your mapping context you can go ahead and add jump and you can add in your spacebar all right so we don't need any modifiers so we can just go jump and we can go ahead and we can just do jump and on cancelled or completed we can do stop jumping so some basic logic like that so as you can see our jumping logic works now what this allows you to do along with that is actually configure stuff such as hold which you know you wouldn't be able to do before so if you were to just click on this plus icon over here and let's say you do hold and over here if you expand this and if I were to actually change the whole time threshold okay I shouldn't do this for move let's do it for jump so I'm going to click on hold and go ahead and change the threshold to 1 time threshold to 1 I'm just showing you guys an example here so now what I can do is I can go ahead and print here so if I were to print so as you can see now he starts jumping after I hold it for one second before you would have to use a timer and stuff like that but now you absolutely don't need to and if I actually uh, print on started as well now we would see that it first says started it starts counting down and then it triggers once the time is over so this is basically how you would use your hold and stuff so let's say you wanted to you know uh, use a health portion or something in a game you can set up the whole logic something like this 
and there is more which you can actually do with this it's not enough to cover in one video so that's about it i guess guys i hope you guys understood how to use this system and i hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching in the next video we'll be looking at how to actually set up player mappable inputs so we'll be having a menu where the player can configure what key he wants to configure for each input action and i'll see you guys next time goodbye